Hey friends, I hope your week is off to a great start. A couple of weeks ago, I fell down a YouTube rabbit hole. We've all been there, right? For me, it started off watching a video from Tiffany Ferguson on flex culture. Suddenly, two hours have passed and watching a video from Smoky Glow about problematic beauty influencers who nobody's talking about. And I'm scrolling through the comments section, as one does, and people are saying that Emma Chamberlain is problematic because her merch is always super expensive. The latest example is her Chamberlain coffee, which is $60 for 30 pouches of coffee. But the kicker is she's recommending you use three pouches for one cup of cold brew. So now it's $60 for 10 cups of cold brew. So that's more than you would pay in a cafe, which is pretty shocking. So all of this leads into today's video. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about and tasting Chamberlain coffee versus steeped coffee versus tiny footprint coffee, which is what I typically drink. So I'm gonna talk about price. I'm gonna talk about the shopping experience. I'm gonna talk about the claims they're making online and packaging, but most importantly, I'm gonna talk about what those claims actually mean. Last, I'm gonna wrap this all up with a blind tasting of the three coffees to see if I can taste a difference and if I have a preference among them. So I do new videos every single week. If you like this one, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up and click subscribe. Without any further ado, let's get into this. Let's talk about Chamberlain coffee. So I already mentioned that it's $60 for 30 pouches, but what's really interesting is there's no price break for buying a large quantity versus a small quantity. So I bought the five count, so this is how it arrived, just a little envelope with the pouches of coffee inside of it. So this was $10 for five packs, so $2 a cup. So as far as the shopping experience, the Chamberlain Coffee website is super, super bare bones. There are only three pages on the site. The first is the welcome screen that has a short message from Emma, along with the shopping section at the bottom. There's a separate tab for shopping shopping, which has all of the same items that are on the first screen, which is a little bit weird. And then there's an instructions page that gives you, you know, how to brew the coffee. So that's it. That's the entire website. So the ordering process is pretty straightforward. I mean, it's 2020. Buying stuff online is super simple. And shipping was a little bit of a struggle with Chamberlain Coffee. I placed the order on December 29th. On the 31st, I got a notice saying that my shipping label had been created, but for whatever reason, the coffee didn't get to me until January 9th. So it took 11 days from start to finish. So let's move on to claims because this is where things get pretty interesting. The first big claim is that Chamberlain coffee is specialty coffee. Now, at first glance, it might just seem like a marketing term to say special coffee is good coffee, right? That's what I thought too. And then I did some Googling and found that there's an actual specialty coffee association of America that hands out ratings for the quality of your coffee. So just like with you know, food products like beef, for example, right? There's select, there's choice, there's prime, and these have actual definitions for what qualifies at each level. Specialty coffee is exactly the same way. So I couldn't find whether there should be some sort of badge or marker that indicates that this is specialty. So I don't know how Chamberlain Coffee is using this word. So that's a little bit confusing. If it's specialty coffee in, in the sense that this is the most premium coffee you can buy, that's awesome. If it's specialty coffee in the sense that we feel like it's special. That seems a little bit misleading. Next, they're saying that this is freshly ground and nitro sealed. So all that means is that they freshly grind the coffee, they put it in the little steeping bag, they put the steeping bag in this little pouch, they suck the oxygen out and replace it with nitrogen and then seal it shut. Nitrogen doesn't erode flavors the same way that oxygen does, so it keeps it fresher for longer. Once you grind coffee, it starts to lose flavor immediately. The nitrogen should protect against that. Next up, you'll notice that there are multiple countries of origin listed on the label. That's not a bad thing. Single origin isn't necessarily better than multi-origin. All it means is that the flavor for this coffee is going to be consistent year round because the beans are coming from a variety of places. They can do kind of a custom blend and that way you can have a really consistent flavor experience. So if you're a real coffee connoisseur, you may like single origin coffee because you can get those really delicate notes that come through in the coffee. In a blend like this, those kind of notes get kind of averaged out. So that's all this means. It's not a bad thing necessarily. The last claim they're making is that the packaging is compostable. So basically this isn't plastic. You could put this in your compost bin and over time this will break down. So it's kind of better for the environment. So next up, let's talk about steeped coffee. What's kind of interesting here is that this is steeped coffee. This is Chamberlain coffee, but it's also steeped coffee. So I'm very curious if these two products are exactly the same thing, just with different packaging. I hope that there's something else going on in Chamberlain Coffee because this is $2 a pouch. This is $1.50 a pouch. So if it's the same product, this is the definition of a ripoff. So I hope there's something else going on inside of here. But nevertheless, let's talk about steeped. So I obviously got a larger box here. This is their variety pack that has all of their different roasts included. 
So steeped coffee is basically the pioneer in the US for this format of coffee. They've been in business for quite a while longer, and so their website is a lot more robust. They've got a lot more brews, they've got a lot more information about who the company is and what they stand for. As far as the ordering process, the workflow was exactly the same as Chamberlain Coffee. However, I ordered it on the 29th and it arrived on January 2nd, so it was significantly faster than Chamberlain Coffee. So they've got a lot more claims on packaging and on their website than the Chamberlain Coffee, which makes me think, why is this one less expensive than Chamberlain Coffee if they have more like good stuff about the brand? So let's talk about the claims that they're making. Just like Chamberlain Coffee, this is multi-origin, freshly ground, nitro-sealed, fully compostable packaging, but they've got other stuff going on too. So the first extra claim that they have is that this is premium direct trade. So that's kind of like fair trade light if you want to think of it that way. So there's not an NGO who is certifying them to be like fair trade compliant. It just means they're treating people in their supply chain correctly and paying them fairly is kind of the idea of it. Next they note that this is precision ground. So all that means is that the particle size of the coffee is all the same, which you should get that for any ground coffee, should be precision ground within a specification. So the benefit there is that gives you a more consistent flavor extraction if all the particle sizes are approximately the same. If you have really small particles, they'll be over extracted, and if you have big particles, they'll be under extracted, which will give you off taste to the coffee. They're also a certified carbon-free business partner, and all that means is that they've paid money based on the size of their company to this nonprofit organization that does work to offset carbon emissions. So planting forests would be an example of that. They pay the money, they get a badge that they can put on their website and they feel good about it. The final thing is that they're a certified B Corp, but their website notes that that is pending. So B Corps or benefit corporations basically have a set of guidelines that govern how they operate. And it's more of a focus on stakeholders versus shareholders. So all the people who are impacted by the company, not just the people who are financially invested in the company. So it seems like they're trying to be a good global citizen. So I like that. The final coffee I'm talking about is my tiny footprint coffee. So this is what I drink every single day. It's whole bean coffee that I grind and then brew. So obviously you're going to pay less than the prepackaged single use coffees. However, you do need a machine. The initial outlay for the machine is kind of paid for by the savings of whole bean coffee within six months. So it's not too bad, but it is something to consider and it's not for everyone. And this isn't really travel friendly. So there's a time and a place, I guess, for every form of coffee. As far as claims go, Tiny Footprint is making a lot of them. So it's USDA organic, so this is an actual certification from the USDA that they meet specific requirements to be certified organic. Next, this is certified fair trade. So unlike the steeped coffee, which was direct trade, this is actual fair trade certified. So there is an NGO who monitors what they're doing all along their supply chain. So that this is kind of like the gold standard. Next, this is a single source co-op. This is a Nicaraguan coffee. As I mentioned kind of at the onset, the flavor here will change over time. It's not as consistent as you're getting in a blend. It's not good or bad, it's just what it is. So this coffee is shade grown, which means that the coffee is grown in a shaded environment, which is more close to its natural habitat. Commercial industrial coffee is grown in direct sunlight, which means that the plants are a little bit stressed and unhealthy and they may need more fertilizers or pesticides to keep them growing. So so some people say that shade grown coffee tastes better. There's not a definitive answer as far as yes it does or no it does not. The last big claim here is that this is carbon negative. So not carbon neutral, carbon negative. For every pound of coffee, the company donates money to fund reforestation in Ecuador. They don't disclose how much money they're funding, but the claim that they're making is that they're planting enough trees to take the carbon out of the air that's generated during the production of the coffee. So again, it's something you can feel good about. And that does it for talking about coffee. Let's get down to tasting it. So I've got water at the boil. Both the steeped coffee and the Chamberlain coffee have the exact same preparation directions. So I'm gonna do them at the same time, side by side. This is the steeped coffee. Smells really good. And now the Chamberlain coffee. Ooh, um, they smell very similar. The texture of these bags is actually slightly different. They both say to gradually pour water over the top of the bag and then dunk the bag for 15 seconds. Yeah, these bags just want to float. It's like there's air inside of them. They don't want to stay underwater. So I guess that's the best we can do. So I'm going to set a timer for five minutes. All right, so our coffee has been steeping for five minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the bags out and the drip coffee here. I'm going to fill it up to the same level as the other two. Okay, so I've got the back side of the coffee cup is blank, so this is going to be facing me. On the other side of the coffee cup is a label of which coffee it is. So I'm going to spin these around, 
and I'm going to have Matt come in and scramble these up while I turn my back. So I'm not going to know which is which. Thank you. Okay, so as far as tasting notes, Chamberlain did not give any description of what the coffee should taste like, so I have no idea what to expect here. The steeped coffee says that it should taste like chocolate, coconut, and fudge. Coconut is a very distinct taste, so I think I should be able to pick up on that. And then chocolate and fudge are kind of the same thing. Um, so that's what I should be tasting there. And then the tiny footprint should taste like chocolate, apricot, fig, and spice. Again, these are pretty specific flavors, so the chocolate between the two might be confusing, but apricot, fig, and spice seems like I should be able to tell the difference there. I have my spoons out. A cupping spoon is a spoon that we use for tasting coffee professionally. And it just helps us aspirate the coffee when we slurp it. It allows us to incorporate some air and really spray that coffee all across our palate. First things first, um, I'm gonna start on the left side. Um, it just smells like coffee. <laughs> I don't know. notice any specific flavor. Um, I don't think I taste coconut. I don't think I taste chocolate or fudge. Okay. Not tasting chocolate in that one not tasting coconut, so maybe this is the Chamberlain coffee. Okay, I think, I think I'm smelling chocolate actually. Let's see. Oh, wow, okay, so this is completely different from the first one. It doesn't, it doesn't taste like chocolate, but I, I got the aroma of chocolate, so maybe this is a sign that this is the steeped or the tiny footprint. I'm not tasting apricot and spice. Oh, and I reused the same spoon. It's cross-contamination. Um, okay, this one. It's different than the other two. All three of these are definitely different coffees, which we, I mean, I, I guess we knew, but I guess this clarifies that the Steep and the Chamberlain are, I think, are, are different coffees, even though they're both medium roast and they both say steeped on the package. It, it seems like it is a different product inside. I'm not really tasting chocolate. I'm not really tasting spice or apricot. I'm going to sip from the cup. Let's see. It's very smooth. It's not, um, it doesn't have that kind of like acidic bite where they're kind of like some sharp higher notes. So this is very like smooth, mellow, and kind of more mild tasting, I would say. The flavor here is much stronger than that one. Maybe it's chocolate? I, I don't know. This confirms that I am not a coffee <laughs> expert. I never said I was, but I'm also not a super taster or a super smeller, apparently. Okay, I think that this is the most chocolatey. And so since the steeped coffee was supposed to have chocolate and fudge, that to me says that this is like double chocolate. So I'm going to say that the middle one is steeped. There were a lot more flavors going on in this one. And since my tiny footprint is single origin, the, the flavor was a lot bigger than this was much more mild. So I think that this is the tiny footprint coffee because there's so much flavor going on. And the Chamberlain is, I'm assuming this one, this was really mild and smooth tasting, really drinkable and delicious. Of the coffees, my favorite probably, I mean, I think 
I think it's this one is my favorite. I, I don't know if this is the Chamberlain or not, but this is my favorite coffee. So um, let's see what they are. No way. Okay. So this is the Chamberlain coffee. Okay. So it's good coffee. This was, it, it was tight, but this was definitely my favorite. Okay, cool. Um, steeped. No way. And then obviously this is the tiny footprint. So I'm super excited um, and super impressed with myself that I was able to um, guess them correctly. So I guess the takeaway here is the Chamberlain coffee. Yes, it is the most expensive of the three, this is two dollars. This is a dollar fifty, and this was I forget like thirty-five cents or something for the cup. It's a really, really good cup of coffee. Steeped coffee, also delicious. I think there, I think there was some chocolate flavor. There was definitely more flavor versus the Chamberlain coffee, and then this had a lot of stuff going on with it. Normally, I drink this iced, so I didn't notice all of these acidic flavors. So, is it worth it to pay two dollars a glass for coffee at home? For me, it's not. However, I do think that this type of coffee is for someone. So if you're traveling a lot and you don't want to drink hotel coffee, th these would be great. All you need is water and you can have a really delicious cup of coffee. This seems worth it. It's still cheaper than getting Starbucks. Um, maybe. Is it? It is. It's No. Is it? Because you're only getting an eight ounce glass of coffee for $1.50 or $2. That's like that's like a tall coffee at Starbucks. Okay, I think... I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to do this. Is it hard? Are you having trouble calculating the tip? Is there something where I carry the one? This part is division. I don't know. I think it's worth it. I think it's still slightly cheaper than getting coffee at a cafe if you drink it warm. Now, if you do this cold brew, I don't think it's worth it because $6 for an 8-ounce glass of cold brew is just, like, insane. So not worth it there. But if you're traveling a lot, I'd say go ahead and splurge on this. I don't think it's something that I would do on the daily. So I hope that you found this useful. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up and click subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.